Hey guys, I know what you're thinking. Hang on a minute, that wasn't an ACWR. And you're right, it wasn't. But it was from part of a 19 kill streak where I started off with the ACWR, but ended up picking up another kit because I was out of ammo. So, today we're using the Ninja Recon Loader as suggested by Stan, a close friend of mine. As the name implies, this setup tries to accommodate an effective stealthy playstyle using a combination of equipment to increase stealth and also intel about the enemy, such as using motion sensors. The primary was the ACWR carbine fitted with an IR, one times IR and V-scope target, de target detector, suppressor and vertical grip. For the sidearm I used a suppressed P226 with a mini RDS sight and for both weapons I used the default paint because that achieved the dark black look reminiscent of a ninja. For the gadget slot there's actually an assortment of useful equipment in the recon arsenal. My go to's were C4, C4 explosive and the motion bores, but I also alternated with the tugs and MAV. I considered using the DS3 decoys to bait people, but I ended up deciding that it wasn't very useful and there were many better choices. Finally, we have the smoke grenade and the ore kit shadow field upgrade that, let's be honest, nobody really uses. Let's start with the ACWR carbine. This gun is a great close quarters weapon with 880 RPM and also a very fast reload. As a general rule, the faster firing weapons such as the AEK from Mars and MTAR have longer reloads to balance it out. However, the ACWR has very competitive reload times of 1.83 seconds with the bullet in the chamber and 2.37 seconds when empty. The muzzle velocity is 500 meters per second when unsuppressed and 330 meters per second when suppressed. If you can control the relatively high recoil, you can make this weapon effective in medium and even longer range, longer range engagements. Unfortunately, the INV sight has many downsides and a red dot sight would have served this ladder a lot better. While aiming down sights with an INV scope, your field of view is limited to that inside the scope greatly limiting awareness. Also, the INV and FLIR scopes have extra visual recoil, same with the iron sights. When the visual recoil was eliminated from virtually all the scopes, it remained on the infrared scopes. So, in addition to already having relatively high recoil, this visual recoil makes the weapon quite hard to control. The only real time this scope would be more effective than an RDS or hollow sight would be when there is smoke surrounding you. While smoke grenades were a part of this loadout, they were designed more to, pro more to provide visual cover for flanking and pushing up. For a smoke monster loadout, utilizing an ammo box and a 200 round LMG like the MG4, the infrared scopes would have been much more fitting, but for this loadout, smokes actually had to be used tactically, so the one scenario where the IR scopes shun flew out the window. After a while, I ended up running the Coyote site because it felt more comfortable and effective. The target, the target detector helped to spot any targets while I was in ADS that I didn't already. I'm fairly sure I spammed the spot button so much that it didn't actually help too much, but having an auto spotter is in my opinion the best accessory out there and also fits in with this loadout well. The suppressor was an essential part of this loadout as it simply allowed for a much sneakier playstyle where you could keep at the back of an enemy team for a very long time before being taken out. I discussed the pros and cons of the suppressor in more detail in a recent video so you can check that out if you want to learn more. The vertical grip is the battle pack equivalent to the ergo grip and while in the battle log description it is described as to improve hip fire, it also benefits strafing ADS accuracy which is mainly why I use it. Overall, it benefits a gun's close quarters accuracy. The sidearm, the 6 out P226, is your average run-of-the-mill pistol. The thing is, there aren't really any bad pistols, or quite reliable and effective. This was equipped with a mini RDS sight. An amusing aspect was that the gun visually recoiled heaps, whereas the reticle was actually sometimes inside the gun, the visual recoil of the gun was that big. This actually led to plenty of scenarios where I thought I was shooting an enemy in the chest when in reality the reticle was actually aiming at their feet or even at the ground. It didn't particularly help that the reticle for the media audience is very hard to see. There was no accessory, I didn't want any flashlight or laser light to give away my position and I had to suppress on the P226 as well. Pistols 
already have a very low muzzle velocity, so slapping on a suppressor makes this even lower. But on the other hand, the far majority of your engagements using this weapon would be in close quarters for when shit hits the fan and you don't have time to reload. In the end, it wouldn't make much sense suppressing a pistol with an unsuppressed primary since you'd be on the minimap anyway, so I'd suggest having corresponding suppressor slash no suppressor statuses for both your primary and secondary. If your primary is suppressed, suppress your sidearm as well, and vice versa. There was a variety of handy gadgets within the recon arsenal. I usually ran C4 since they came in handy in those epic flanks even if explosions aren't the most stealthy things in the world. They would also be useful for taking out vehicles but I mainly focus on infantry centric maps and game modes which I'll explain later. You have the motion sensor balls and tugs that detect moving enemies within 25 meters and shows them up on the mini map. The motion sensor balls or pokey balls are more suited for an aggressive playstyle because you have multiple of them that you can throw whereas for the tugs you only get one. The downside of the pokey balls is that they are only active for 24 seconds. The spawn beacon, if used right, can be a very effective target um, gadget, especially for a well-coordinated squad. There was a round of Operation Locker where a squad and the other team would keep spawning on Echo, our gimme. You'd clear them out and recapture the objective, and before you know it, they were back. We found and destroyed some of the beacons, but it seemed they always had some hidden somewhere. The MAV is a flying drone primarily used to spot enemies, but also acts as a motion sensor when it's being controlled by the player. I considered using the decoy, but decided against it because you only get one of them, and that wasn't exactly um, tactical. Maybe you could use it to juke one or two enemies, and then there wasn't much use to it. The smoke grenade is another integral part of this setup. The smoke grenade, as I said in a previous video, allows for pushing up and flanking. It also works in conjunction with the IR scopes because they rely on heat signatures and can see through the smoke. I did attempt to use the grenades for the second purpose, but I found I didn't encounter too many situations where it was necessary. Finally, the field upgrade was the shadow field upgrade, which is probably one of the least used upgrade paths in the game. The first specialization is quick on spot, which reduces the time you are spotted from 7 seconds to 5 seconds, shaving almost 30%. The second specialization is Sprint, which increases Sprint Speed by 10%. The third specialization is Reduced Fall, which increases the threshold at which not falling would right? not do any damage, which is around the height of a two-story building. Lastly, the fourth specialization is Stealth, which means you cannot be detected by motion sensors while walking. This means the only way you can get caught would be by sprinting. Overall, I think that this field upgrade is decent, but unfortunately not as useful as a lot of the other upgrade paths. Having an extra 3 magazines of primary ammo, or increased C4 and motion ball capacity, would seem to be more useful in a vast majority of combat scenarios. Now, this loadout worked best in Operation Locker, and was decent on other infantry centric maps. This loadout is centered around getting behind the enemy and taking them out by surprise. That doesn't work in big open maps with lots of vehicles. Operation Locker is the map for anyone looking to get a good flank. With very limited lanes, this basically channels the players together into high density areas, giving you the best reward once you do get to push past a certain lane. This is also better for this loadout because smoke grenades are a lot more effective in this kind of map as well. Metro, Zavod and Flood Zone would also work quite well, but Operation Locker is where this loadout shines. Overall, I had a lot of fun getting on some nice big back rages and getting some nice skill streaks. I would have tweaked this loadout by taking off the I and V scope and choosing the Special Forces field upgrade instead of Shadow. Oh my God, but that's that it for today, guys. Joking? The next episode of Suit Up should be about the Type 88 LMG as suggested oh. by Rise of Chris. You can leave a loadout down below and I'll probably get around to doing it. Thanks for watching and peace out.